What is up everyone, Avial Easter here with Yappa238.com and welcome to the Yappastolic Podcast. The podcast where we talk about being young, being apostolic, taking that power and putting it into action. What is up, Yappa fam? How is everyone doing today? I know I always say that every single podcast like you guys can answer, but apparently you guys can't because it's like a monologue, not really a dialogue. Um, the Yappa lies are for the dialogue. The DMs are for dialogue, or if that's like textual dialogue, I guess. Um, <laughs> but the podcast, I always come off like that because like, it just seems like I can talk to you guys cause I'm actually talking to you guys in my own little behind the computer type world as if you guys were actually here. And that's actually how I like to do the podcast is doing it as if I'm talking to Yappa fam in general, like a thousand of you guys, or just one of you guys. I like doing it this way. Uh, I think it's better. I think it's just, just cooler in general. But that is beside the point, um, not really relevant <laughs> for today's podcast, but you guys, generally with the podcast, I like to open up with um, just a few things, just a few words here and there, whether words regarding my life, um, certain things that have been happening, or just things that I am honestly just grateful for, and that's really how I feel over the past few months, over the past few weeks, I've been feeling this great sense of gratitude and thankfulness um, just for living. And here's the crazy thing, guys, is that we don't even deserve to be living, if you really think about it. God has so ordained it, because he controls everything, mind you. He, he's, he has everything under his control, everything in his power and his dominion. He does not need to be allowing us to exist, but yet we're here. We could have been any other individual within this entire world, away from the gospel, away from the truth. We could have been them, but we're not. We're us. We are ourselves. And some people don't look at that. Some people get so caught up in life. Some people get so caught up in what they could be or what they desire to do or the things that they want to achieve in this world or the things that they don't think they are. They think they're worthless. They think their life doesn't have any meaning. They think all these crazy thoughts. And honestly, you can feel bad for individuals like that. And in some senses, I do. But ultimately, it's like, hey, you got to know and realize your life did not just happen. There is a very purposeful God who purposefully put you on this earth for a reason. He allowed you to be out of every single cell that could have begun to produce another one of its kind. God allowed you to exist and he holds your existence inside of the palm of his hand which is absolutely incredible to think. And we as apostolics, we have a hope of glory. We have a hope of eternity with this Jesus Christ. If we do our best and endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And so we have something to look forward to that not a lot of people do. And it is our mandate that we expose as many people as we possibly can to the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ Not saying that everybody, unfortunately, will accept it or receive it. And some people, unfortunately, again, may fall off here and there. But ultimately, there is a church, Yappa fam. There is a body of Christ that we have the opportunity of being a part of. That is super humbling. That I'm thankful for. That I'm grateful for because, again, not everybody is experiencing that right now. You know, in third world countries, it's not only that they don't have the gospel, they don't have anything to eat. They, they're, they're dying of starvation without the gospel. And that's just crazy. Kids being brought into the world and within two short years of their lives, a sickness befalls them. You know, a terror takes their lives. Guys, we have things to be thankful for. Our family members are still here. Our natural members, I mean, like the members of your body, your arms still intact. You know, your legs are functioning right. You're healthy if you are. If you're not, you have access to a God who can heal you. I mean, not everybody has that. So no matter what you're going through in this season of your life, there's something to be thankful for if you look for it. Don't let the devil flood things into your mind and allow your mind to be consumed with these thoughts of, 
I'm the only one going through my situation. I'm the only one who's been abused this way. I'm the only one who's been done wrong this way. I'm the only one who did X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Don't let the devil do that because there's something to be thankful for. Someone has it 10 times worse than you do somewhere in the world. This is a great way to start a podcast. <laughs> All sober and everything. But no, seriously, someone in the world has it 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times worse than you have it. And they're living life to the best of their ability. And that's just, that's incredible. I mean, I have all my limbs. They don't work as I would like them to work, but I'm grateful that I have them. You know, I'm still seeking healing for some of them, like my knee and things like that. I'm still seeking healing and I believe God's going to heal it. One day God's going to heal it. I'm not content just living with the knee like this. I want God to heal it, but I'm grateful and I'm thankful that I have my members intact. So it's kind of just how I've been feeling over the past week, kind of summarized in just a few short moments of me talking. Um, gratitude, thankfulness, just being thankful that I'm alive, thankful that I'm in the church, thankful I get to hear preaching, the preaching of the truth. Some people aren't hearing that, and I'm grateful and I'm thankful for it. And so to God be all glory, Yapa fam, find some things to be thankful about. You know, write a quick little list of, you know, little points of, oh, I'm thankful for this. I, I did that one morning and I came up with 63 things that I was thankful for within 90 seconds. It's, oh, I'm thankful for my hands. I'm thankful for my clap. I'm thankful for my song. I'm thankful for my this and that. I just started thanking God for so many different things because he's worthy of it. We don't deserve any of it, but he's allowed us to experience it. And that's just, that's just, whew, man, that's crazy. So now, the Apple fam, today's podcast is going to be a very, very good podcast, especially what's coming up in the next 30 seconds, I believe is going to be absolutely hilarious. So as I was thinking about the podcast, I was thinking about the segments of them, the young, the apostolic and the PIA segments. And then I thought, wait a second, what about the story of the week? And when I go back and think about the podcast beforehand, I don't really think that I've had too many awesome stories of the weeks, if that makes sense. <laughs> I didn't have too many awesome ones, I don't think. And I started thinking, Avio, your life is absolutely hilarious. I mean, you're crazy, you're silly, you're just off the wall. And I'm sure you can say something. I'm sure you have stories that you can give to the Yappa fam during the podcast of your childhood, of your early teenage years, of all that, that I think that they'll enjoy. And so I was thinking, yeah, you know what? I should probably bring something from my past <laughs> to the story of the week. And that was the original point of the story of the week. And so, yeah, we're just going to get started on it right now. So, the story of the week. So, now today's story of the week. Let's kick it back about, man, how many years ago? This About a decade ago? No, not even a 12 years ago. Wow, dude, I'm old. <laughs> Let's kick it back 12 years ago when I was about nine years old. Right. When I was nine, I was a kid. You know, I was a young boy, just like any other young boy. I liked sharp things. I liked sticks. I liked stones. I liked knives. I liked guns. I liked war. Rah, a real kid's boy's man's kid. Yeah, a real kid. <laughs> and so we as kids with my cousins and with my family, we would go out. We will play with our little green army men in the deep, tall grass and they would have the most incredible battles known to man in the jungles of the front yard. I promise you, these were some of the most intense battles ever. And we would play and we'd have fun. We we're just kids, right? And so me being hip to the whole war deal, my mom and my stepdad gave me a pocket knife. So I'm about nine years old, about nine, ten years old. And I got this knife on me. Now, I didn't do nothing with it. As long as I was in front of adults. I didn't do anything with it. Just kept it in my pocket. But then, when we were kids and we got together, then it was like, let's sharpen every single stick in the backyard. Ching, 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 I mean, just, right? So this knife, this is my trusty knife. It's actually a, a Winchester knife. It was like a pretty, pretty legit deal, right? It was a folding knife, just pop, 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 pop. There's like three different blades, right? And so one day, I'm away from everybody. I'm by myself. I'm in my room. My mom's like, hey, guys, go clean up your room. And so I go over there to go clean up my room. 
And as I'm in my room, I spy this cardboard box. This card is just a piece of cardboard, and I see it out of the corner of my eye. And I look to the other side, in the other corner of my eye, and I spy my trusty, handy, dandy, always being used, just never announced that it's being used, (laughs) Winchester folding pocket knife. And I'm like, dude, knife plus cardboard equals a gang of fun, right? (laughs) So I look at the cardboard, I'm like, I wonder how many times I could stab this thing. Like, I just wonder how many times I could take the blade, hold it in like a reverse grip, and just stab this thing. And so, curiosity got the best of me. So I unfold my pocket knife, click, click, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's on. So I start slashing, wow, wow, like if I was some like, mm, Navy SEAL, just, uh, just uh, uh. well, my Navy SEAL skills weren't as on point as I thought they were. I stab it once, I stab it again, I slash it, I bring it up right over my shoulder, and I come down on it quickly. Wah! And something that I did not expect to happen happened to me. Instead of the blade going through the cardboard, the cardboard decided to create this impenetrable field right on the surface of the cardboard. So this impenetrable shield then deflects the tip of the knife, causing the pressure that would have been applied to the cardboard to buckle at the weakest link. Now, the blade was steel, my hand was bone and flesh, and so the weakest point on this knife was the folding mechanism at the end of the blade. So then what happened? The folding mechanism decides to give. Now, mind you, I'm in a reverse grip. And so I stick this thing as hard as I could, all the energy going to this folding mechanism, causing it to weaken and buckle, ultimately to where my hand continues to go as if it is penetrating the cardboard. And the blade decides to stay as if the cardboard is deflecting the blade. (laughs) And as you guys can probably guess what happens, the blade flicks into, at the speed of which I am stabbing this cardboard box, it flicks into my pinky. Just, and just, right into my pinky, right? And for a moment, I don't hear the of the cardboard. I'm like, where did that sound go? I should be hearing that cardboard sound, but instead I'm hearing a click of blade on something hard. And so then I pull my hand back, examining what's going on and why these noises that I anticipated to hear aren't coming through. And I look to see the Winchester gift to me knife's blade resting on top of my bone just a few millimeters through the top layer of my flesh. And so I'm a nine-year-old kid, right? And at nine, the first thing that goes through your head isn't, ouch, or isn't, oh my goodness, I have a blade stuck in my hand. The first thing that goes through your head is, oh my goodness, my mom's going to find out I cut myself. Okay, so I'm sitting there with the blade in my finger, no blood, nothing yet, because it was just such a clean cut, just boom. And I lift my hand up, and I'm like, am I really seeing what I'm seeing? And so then I pull the blade out, and without any pain, it just glides out from between my flesh. And then the blood show. All of a sudden, all this blood just starts gushing out of my pinky. (laughs) And that just turned me up like about 50 notches. Oh my goodness, my mom's going to see me bleeding. (laughs) Not that I was cut, not that it hurt. I honestly do not remember feeling any pain. All I remember was the clock of the blade on my bone 
and me just flipping out. My mom's going to see me and blood's just flowing down my hand. It's just a going. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the most reddest blood I've ever seen in person. And I'm not getting queasy. I'm not getting anything like that. I'm just tripping out because my mom's going to see me with blood running down my hand. And so I jump up and I run to the bathroom holding my pinky now with blood in my left hand, trying to hide everything, kick the door closed with my foot, turn on the water with the two fingers that I had, and threw my finger into the water. And just the entire sink is now full of blood. And I'm like, oh my goodness, my mom's going to see me with blood. And so literally, I did not know what to do. So I'm... I'm clenching it super tight, not knowing that that's the first aid type of skill. I'm just like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm just holding my finger like, ah. And so I run to the toilet tissue. I like <laughs> out a roll and wad this giant dill of toilet tissue around my finger, hoping it'll stop the bleeding. And I'm just sitting there squeezing it so tight because I'm like, my mom's going to find out and I'm going to get in trouble. And so I'm sitting there like a kid. And I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I'm in the bathroom maybe 10 minutes just holding my finger. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Then I'm like, I lift it up and there's no blood. I'm like, okay, cool. Bleeding stopped. And then all of a sudden blood starts coming. I'm like, no. So I have to do it again with the toilet tissue, wrap it around. And then finally it got to a place where I lifted it up and there was no blood at all. So I threw a band aid on, just like a normal little band aid. Flicked it on and walked out of the bathroom as if nothing ever happened. I ran back to my blade, like halfway open now. And I look, no blood on the blade, no blood on the floor. Everything looks say okay. Okay, let's get back to cleaning. <laughs> oh man, literally that happened. That was super funny. So yeah, I just went back to cleaning and that was the end of that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this podcast story of the week. And <laughs> I, I hope it was... It was funny. Um, It was funny to me as a little kid. And so parents listening out there, be careful because your kids may be slashing at stuff, doing things they ought not be doing and getting in trouble for it. Uh, Just not telling you, though. But anyway, (laughs) if you guys see your kids acting funny, ask them what's going on, okay? (laughs) Okay, now, Yappa fam, let's jump into today's podcast. We're going to talk about something that is absolutely critical for us as young apostolics to get. Okay, because generally when you're a young person, you have high, high, high ambitions. And when you're looking to do something for the kingdom of God, your ambitions are towards the things of God. And God isn't biased towards age. I mean, just look at Samuel. Samuel, he was a little kid getting all these words from God. God was actually speaking to him as a prophetic word, like as a prophet, as he would speak to a prophet against and about and regarding a priest. Okay, and he was a young kid. And so God is not biased towards your age and God will use you. And if you're ambitious as young people are, he will use that as well. And so you're an ambitious young person that is just gung ho about the kingdom of God. You want to make a difference in this world. You want to make your mark, not really your mark, but a mark for the kingdom of God. You want to make a mark for the kingdom of God on this planet so that souls could be saved, so that great things can happen. You want to see blinded eyes open. You want to see deaf ears unstopped. You want to see the miraculous be performed and revivals kicking off because a dead man was raised from the dead. Okay, you want to see all that stuff. You want to do great things for the kingdom of God. And that is great. That is honorable. And there's a right way to go about it. And you're willing to do whatever it takes, whatever right way to go about it there is, in order for you to see it. And that is phenomenal. That is amazing. So to you young apostolics listening to today's podcast, if anything I just skimmed over applied to you, you being ambitious, you wanting to be used of God, you wanting to see the great things of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God being demonstrated in this very hour, you want to see all of that, then this podcast is for you. If you want to start something for the kingdom of God, if you want to start an entity, start an endeavor, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit that you want to use and invest into the kingdom of God in a way that's never been done before, this podcast is for you. 
If you just want to be in the mix, doing something for the kingdom of God, you don't want to be a sideline viewer. You don't want to be in the stands or in the bleachers. You want to be on the field playing the game as hard as possible for the kingdom of God. If that is you, then this podcast is for you. Okay, so I want you guys to open your ears, open your hearts, open your spirits to receive whatever you can out of this podcast that is going to help you. (laughs) Allow it to resonate in your heart. Allow it to resonate in your life because, yappa fam, I'm a young person like that and the Holy Ghost has dealt with me about this subject and so I'm bringing it to you because I believe it will help you guys. But before we jump into today's podcast completely and entirely, I want to bring to you guys a sponsor of today's podcast. Now really when we talk about the sponsor of today's podcast, it's not really sponsored by anybody really like there's no financial backing that's coming into Yappa. I just like to make it known to the Yappa fam what we got going on on the website, on other social media outlets, wherever, wherever. I like to let you guys know what's going on on these podcasts. So today's sponsor of this Yappa Sock podcast is Yappaware. Now, honestly, Yappa fam, if you want to be a blessing to Yappa 238, the best way you can do it, the most efficient and most effective way, is if you engage with Yappa Wear. If you buy some product from Yappa 238, it's going to help support the mission of Yappa 238. It's going to help with everything that we do or that I do, help us do more, help us reach more, do greater things. I mean, there are so many. Yappa 230 is practically endless. It's an entity that the Holy Ghost started uh, about two years ago, or maybe millennia upon millennia ago, into the eternal God has started Yappa 238, and he has made it manifest here on earth. And as of now, Yappa 238 has not reached its is far, actually really far from reaching <laughs> the capacity that it could reach and that it can grow into. Yappa 238 literally can be a entity that reshapes the world, I truly believe. And I believe that God, His infinite power can infinitely do so. So if you want to support Yappa 238 where we're at right now, as we're growing into bigger, greater, what the Holy Ghost has planned for Yappa 238, go ahead and check out some of the Yappa wear. We got beanies, we got t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, we got mugs, we got a lot of different things on the Yappa 238 website that you can go ahead and purchase and yeah, drop some money into Yappa 238 to help forward the vision and forward the mission. If you'd like, go ahead and click the link down in the bio description, wherever this is at, if you're listening to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. Wherever you're listening to this podcast on, go ahead and find the link in the description of this video or you can go to yappa238 forward slash shop and go ahead and check out some of the Yappa wear there. So now with the sponsor of today's podcast out of the way, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of today's podcast, something that I believe is going to help you guys immensely. It helped me immensely. And it's ushered me, literally ushered me into a new dimension in my walk with God because of uh, what the Holy Ghost has called me to. And so if you guys, again, if you guys have ambition, if you guys have vision, if you guys have passion to do more, to do great things within the kingdom of God, to create things, especially to be creators, to be people who uh, bring visions into reality, if you are that type of person If you have been called by God to do something great for the kingdom of God, today's podcast is for you. So let's jump into the young segment of today's podcast with first a reading from the Holy Scriptures. So Yappa fam, I am going to read about nine verses of scripture just real quick. I know how some young people can get when people start reading scripture, they start dozing off. (laughs) And so I'm going to be quick about it and I'm going to add a little commentary, I guess you would call it, as we go through this, make some key notes. And so it's a little more interactive than just me straight reading for nine scriptures. Now the reading is going to be found in Joshua chapter one, verses one through verse 9. Okay, so go ahead and get on your phone, jump on that Bible app, whatever Bible app you use, go and hit your iPad or grab your black leather bound hard copy of the contract and go ahead and go to Joshua 1 through 9. Now, as you guys are getting there, I want to give you guys some context about this reading. Okay, Israel just came through a 40-year 
trial in the wilderness where all the doubters, all the people that said it couldn't be done, all the murmurers, all the complainers, all, all them people died. Okay. God didn't like their murmuring, complaining, and he said, no, you're not going in and you're going to die in the wilderness. God opened the door for them to move into their blessing, but because of their mentality and because of their mindset, they were barred from it. So just like we've talked about in other podcasts, get your mentality straight, get your mindset straight so you don't get barred and end up dying in the wilderness between the bondage from Egypt and the promised land. Okay. You don't want to get caught there. So now, The children of Israel just came over Jordan. They just crossed the Jordan. Moses has died. His body has been buried by the Lord. Michael and Satan, Lucifer, were fighting over his body, etc., etc. All that has already taken place. Now the children of Israel are over the Jordan, and the Lord comes to Joshua, now the ruler of Israel, or the leader, the captain of Israel. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass... Again, Joshua 1, 1, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, verse 3 is coming up next, but I want you guys to pay close attention to the promise that the Lord gives unto Joshua. It was Moses' promise, and now it is Joshua's. Okay. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. There we see the faith of God. We'll talk about that in later Yapa material. Verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Now this is critical to us as young apostolics because he just got a word from God like we often get words from God. And he just received it right now. Okay, and listen to what the Holy Ghost tells Joshua to do. This is the hinge. This is what predicates all this is predicated upon this verse. How Joshua receives verse number seven. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Don't veer away from this. Don't veer away from this law that I gave Moses. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And now I'll speed read through this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Meditate, meditate, meditate. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, and neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Boom, fire. Joshua got a word from God. He got a promise from God. There was something that it hinged upon because he was moving into his destiny as the leader of Israel. Now, let's move into the young segment of today's podcast, and we're going to dissect all this. And we're going to find out just how to conquer Canaan's land. Okay, okay, now, Avio, what just happened here? Well, what we're finding in Joshua 1 and 1 through verse 9 is that the Lord is affirming Joshua not only as the leader of Israel, but he is placing upon him a promise, okay? And that's critical for us to know because we receive promises from God. When we're visionaries, when we're young apostolics who want to do amazing things for the kingdom of God, when we decide that we're not going to stick with the status quo and we're going to be as much as God will allow us to be, he will give us promises and he will promise things to us if we are obedient to his word. Okay, so it looks like we're at an altar. Okay, we're praying in the Holy Ghost, begging for him to use us in a greater capacity than what he's using us 
now. Okay, we're preached at during a youth retreat or youth revival. And while we're there, we're praying, God, use us for your kingdom and I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever you ask of me, God, I will do it. Or God, I want to do something for your kingdom that has never been done before. You got to watch what you pray because if you really pray these prayers, you got a real God who's listening and he'll answer your prayers. Okay, I surrender all to you, Jesus, withholding nothing. I need you, Jesus. Use me. Okay, so we're praying all those prayers. And if we're not careful, we can think, oh, I just prayed the prayer. And that's you you go on with your life. But God hears those prayers. And if you're sincere about it, and if you're someone he can move on and begin to use, he's going to use you. He's going to start doing it. Okay, and he'll speak to us. You'll feel it in your heart. You're called to preach or you're called to be a missionary. He puts a particular country in your mind to establish a church in that location or a burden he puts upon you. Okay, or someone speaks a prophetic word into your life that, hey, you're called to do great things. There's greatness upon you. I feel it in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Ghost. And all these things are coming to you. And now you're like, "Okay, wait a second. (laughs) <laughs> I was praying, and then now I'm finding confirmation outside of prayer. Okay, that's how Jesus will answer. Another way he'll answer is by bringing things into your life. Okay, not always is he going to thunder his voice out of heaven or a still small voice is going to meet with you. Sometimes it's going to be very evident by what he brings into your life. Okay, don't be fearful of the word of God in that regard as well. Some people are like, oh, I, I didn't hear it from heaven. Or, oh, you know, I didn't hear it, you know, uh, in prayer. Okay, well, is your man of God saying it? Is it coming into your life? Is some a burden that's just being placed upon you? Okay, so don't get, you know, trippy or don't get like, oh, I don't know what to do. I, I didn't hear from God. Oh, no, it's not God. No, 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 no. Okay, that's the same thing that happened in Yappa 238. Yappa 238? Yappa 238. Same thing would happen with Yappa. Okay, I got a word from God after I had seen it start to come into my life. Little visions, little ideas will start popping in my head. Oh, that would be cool if someone created this. That will be someone if they did this and all that other stuff, right? So I'm thinking, oh, that's tight, dude. And then my dad's like, hey, you should go pray about it. So I prayed about it. And it wasn't like God gave me, boom, I have called you to this ministry, Aviel. Thus saith the Lord. This, and the, It wasn't that. He just gave me a name for the thing. Y-A-P-A. Yappa, Young Apostolic Power in Action. That's tight. That's all he gave me. He didn't give me this big word of saying, thus saith the Lord, this is your ministry for the next few years, and this is what's going to happen, and I proclaim it, and it sh- and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Like, it wasn't even like that. Okay, it was just Y-A-P. Four letters God gave me to establish his word in my life, and now we're on today's podcast. <laughs> so all that to say that you can receive a word from God And you got to be sensitive to it. It could come from prayer. It can come from your pastor. It can come from your parents. It can come from just things that arise in your life. It can come from a burden that you have. It can come from anything. Okay. And that could be a validation of the word of God. And then you validate it. You know, you cross reference certain people, important people in your life, you know, leaders in your life. And you say, hey, is this something I should do? Is this something? And God confirms it that way. So now that you got the confirmation. Just like Joshua had it. Hey, boy, you're doing this Canaan deal. Okay, you're conquering Canaan. That was your promise. And as the word says in verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given you. Okay, that's what God says to Joshua. Well, I've given unto you, but that's what God says to Joshua. That was his promise. And so my promise looks like, hey, the Appa 238 is going to flourish into this great entity that I've seen in the spirit. That's my promise. Okay, but on the heels of a promise, and this is one thing that Yappa fam, you got to get, you got to, it's like a must have, must, uh, it's a tool in your toolbox. It's a foundational apostolic understanding that you have got to have. I want you guys to share this with as many people as you can, because this is something that I don't see a lot of people uh, uh, regarding. And when you don't regard it, you lose that which the Holy Ghost has spoken to you. Okay, I term it hinges. I call it hinges. Some people call it instructions. Some people call it other things. But what is the hinge? Okay, because the word of God can come forth. And when the word of God comes forth, it will not return back unto God void. Okay, it will accomplish that which it has been sent to accomplish. Right. It's going to do it no matter what. So when he said, let there be light, it was bam, just light. Okay, when he said, let there be boom, that came up and boom, that happened. Okay, so when God speaks his word, it 
will come into fruition. Now, when he deals with humanity as free will moral agents, we can decline or accept his word. Just like a hinge swings something to the right or to the left, that's our human will. If God says, if you do X, Y, and Z, I will do this. Or if he says, I will do X, Y, and Z, if you do this, you got to be hunting for that if. Because that if is the X factor in what happens. Will you see that miracle performed? Will you step into your destiny? Okay, because if you don't abide by that if, that hinge, then you could thwart the will of God in your life. And that is a God's honest truth. You may be called to, you know, uh, I don't know, see 5 million, 10 million, 100 million people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But his if, his hinge, the hinge that he gives you is that you must be praying eight hours a day or something like that. This is an example. And you don't pray then guess what's not going to happen? You're not going to see that come into fruition because you do not abide by the word of God. Your hinge said no. It's like a lever or a light switch, on or off. Okay, If you turned it on by praying eight hours a day for however long you needed to in order to see 100 million people get the Holy Ghost, then bada bing, bada boom. You've stepped into the destiny of the Holy Ghost and he's going to unfold it because you're abiding by his word. Now, if you're disobedient to the word and you relinquish the word of God, that's why the devil always attacks. He, he wants your faith because if you can lose faith, you can flip that light switch off and then the word of God can't come into fruition. And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the devil is hard after your faith and he'll do anything, 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 anything to have your faith, but you can't let him have it. That's why it's so imperative that you hold on to the word and you do not give up on the word of God that comes into your life. You cannot spend a second in doubt. You can't spend a minute in doubt. You cannot ever vocalize doubt. Don't ever vocalize doubt. Don't ever, 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 ever vocalize doubt. Okay, don't ever do it. Don't ever speak it into the atmosphere. Don't even ever speak it. Why? Because the devil can't read your mind. But if he can feel that, okay, my doubt attack is working, I'm going to keep on it. You can't let that happen. Okay, because you need your light switch on. You need your trust in the word of God on. You need your obedience to the word of God on predicated upon the hinge. Okay, so what was Joshua's hinge? Joshua's hinge we can find beginning in Joshua 1, 6. The Lord says, be strong. Ow, I just bit my tongue. <laughs> the Lord said, be strong and of a good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance, etc., etc." His if, his mandate, his hinge was be strong and of a good courage. And we find that validated in verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Now, it wasn't just be strong and very courageous in battle. Be strong and very courageous when you walk down the street. No, no, no. Be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Another hinge, a part of the hinge at which the door of destiny swings upon. Ooh, that sounds good. The door of destiny swings upon the hinges that the Holy Ghost gives you. When you receive a word from God. Okay. So only be thou strong and very courageous. Ding. Hinge one. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. That means Joshua. Observe to do according to all the law. Boom. Hinge two. Which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Boom. Hinge three. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse eight. This book shall not depart out of thy mouth. Boom. Hinge four, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Boom. Hinge five, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then, when you do those five things, Joshua, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And then God says it one last time in verse nine, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, is with thee, is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua, here's your promise. Apostolic young person, here's your promise. Apostolic young person, here's your destiny. Joshua, here is your destiny. This is what I've called you to do. This is what I want you to accomplish. This is what you're here on earth to do. Here it is. 
And here's what you got to do in order to see it come into fruition. Joshua had five things. What are your five things? What are your three things? What is your one thing? What is your 10 things? Whatever he's called you to do, whatever he's told you to do, whatever he desires you to do, what is your if? What is your hinge? And I promise you guys, every word from God has a hinge. There's an if. There's an X factor in it. Well, excuse me, every word of God that has to do with humanity and our destiny and our lives, that has hinges on it. That is predicated upon what we choose to do, what we will do, what we will to do. And so what are your hinges? You may not know them right now. You may not have gotten them right now, to be honest. God may give you your hinge in the future. Just keep living for God. Or maybe it's in his word. Just keep studying the word until you find out what you have to do in order to have success like the Holy Ghost was talking about. So now we've covered hinges. We've talked about it. We've talked about instruction. We've talked about promise. We've talked about those things in the young segment of the podcast. We're going to jump into the apostolic segment of the podcast so we can start applying the things that the Holy Ghost told Joshua to our lives because it does apply whether you like it or not. It actually does apply. And (laughs) it's really awesome because we get an outline on what we do in order to conquer Canaan or very specifically how to fulfill our destinies in our life. So we're going to jump into the apostolic segment of today's podcast. Goodbye, young segment. And (laughs) let's jump into that right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So Yappa fam, how do we conquer our Canaan? How do we bring our destiny into reality? How do we do these things, Yappa fam? Well, like we counted out, there are five hinges that we find in the story of Joshua in chapter one, verses one through nine. We find five hinges and I'm gonna list them out real quick. First, Be strong and very courageous. Number two, obey the word of God. Number three, don't veer from what the Holy Ghost has called you to do. Number four, don't forsake the word of God from your lips. Don't let it leave your mouth. Don't let it forsake your mouth. And number five, meditate upon the law. Make it a part of who you are. So let's dig into this because this is where the rubber meets the road, the rubber meets the road, the road meets the rubber, the rubber meets the road with these five actions, these five hinges that we find in the word of God in Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine. So let's jump into the verse one, and that is to be strong and very courageous. Okay, Yappa fam. On Yappa 238, we talk a lot about conquering your fears because those little punks, punks of fear, they stop you. They try to stop you from actualizing your potential, fulfilling the will of God in your life. They try to, you know, keep you from actualizing and stepping into your destiny. That's what those things are designed to do. Okay. And so God knew that every single battle that the Israelites would face they would be facing the possible fear of death, of loss, of destruction, of annihilation. Think about it. They were nomadic people at that point. They just came from Egypt. They didn't have any place to live. They didn't live in the wilderness. They didn't live over Jordan. They had no place to go. They could have been just wiped out. The only thing they had on their side was the power of the Holy Ghost, the God of eternity, which was is like the only power, <laughs> the only power, they had the power, the only power on their side, right? But not in the natural. In the natural, it looked like they could have been completely wiped out if, you know, 10 or 15 of the kings got together, got their arms together and just blah, 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 killed all the Israelites, right? That could have very well happened, but it didn't. Okay, that was a legitimate fear. And so what does the Lord of glory say to Joshua? He says, I will be with you like I was with Moses. Remember all those miracles that you saw me do, Joshua? Remember all the intimate times that I had with Moses? Do you remember all that? Well, I'm about to have that with you. I will be with you like I was with Moses. So please, Joshua, be strong and be very courageous because you're going to need as much courage as you can to conquer your fears. I heard a quote. It said that being courageous isn't not having fear. Being courageous is fighting past your fears. Okay. And I completely agree with that. It's not that your fears are going to go anywhere. It's you got to push past them and kick them out of your life by displacing them through 
action and completing the will of God in your life. Okay, that's how you get rid of your fears is by pushing past them, press past your fears, right? And so God's telling him that. And so the Yapa fam, that's the same thing for us. Okay, we've got to be strong. We've got to be very courageous. Okay, and we cannot let fear push us in a corner and back us down. Number two on the list, obey the word of God. Many times God is saying in Joshua 1 that Joshua, don't forsake the word. Don't forsake the law. Yapa fam, when we get a promise from God and we get hinges, don't forsake it. Okay, don't leave it alone. Don't ever think you get to the place where, okay, God, I can handle this. As Paul said, did we start in the spirit so we can finish in the flesh? No, 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 no. Yapa fam, we got to obey the word of God. If he said, hey, this is your promise. Hey, this is your destiny. You got to go for your destiny. Okay, and that goes into the third point, which is don't veer from the word of God. Don't veer out of your destiny. So many people have been utterly and completely destroyed because they were not, and I'm talking about their ministries being destroyed, because they stepped out of the will of God for their lives. And God forbid, by the mercies and the grace of Almighty God, that none of us ever do that. In Jesus' name, I pray that nothing like that ever happens to us. Yapa fam, we cannot veer from the word of God and step out of the will of God for our lives by disobeying the law, by disobeying the Bible, by disobeying the word of God for our lives. Don't look at someone else's ministry. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. Don't look at someone else's ministry and say, God, I want that type of ministry. And God's like, no, well, I want this type of ministry for you. But you're like, no, that ministry, everybody knows about it. Every, it's so powerful. It's so great. It's so great. It's so this and so that, God, I want that. And so, and it gets so bad to the place where you decide to step out of your ministry outside the word of God, looking to the right hand and to the left. And ultimately try to step into that ministry that the Holy Ghost didn't call you to. And when you do that, you're you're susceptible to any demonic attack that comes with that ministry that you were not prepared for. So Yapa fam, don't veer to the right or to the left looking at other people's ministries. Stay focused like a flint. Just boom. Focused on the word of God for your life. Okay. Number four, don't forsake the word of God from your mouth. Okay, the power of life and death is in our tongues. Okay, we can speak things into existence, call those things that are not as though they are. We have so much power in our mouths that we cannot be speaking doubt, we cannot be speaking fear, we cannot be speaking anything that is subject to doubt or subject to fear. A statement such as, Man, I just cannot. You know, or I, I'm I'm too scared to. Man, it's so scary moving into this. Or so di- don't speak things like that. Let the word of God lead your mouth. And I'm talking about literally. A lot of people think, oh yeah, power, of life, and death is in the tongue. You know, and and they think all these thoughts about what we actually say, and they don't take it to heart. No, yeah, but fam, I'm talking about the literal words that you form, the English words that you form with your tongue and your lips. That thing, that little deal right there, that thing needs to be guarded. You got to watch what you say. It's not that we just don't cuss. It's that we just don't let anything out our mouth that is doubtful, that is doubt relating, that is doubt encouraging, that is fear encouraging. Okay, don't speak anything like that. Don't let it come out your mouth. I'm talking about have a bridle over your tongue and don't let words of fear, don't let words of, 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 of I don't know, of, yeah, fear, <laughs> doubt or anything like that stop get in get in get into your spirit get into your mouth and then it just comes out don't let that happen okay that's something that the word of the lord says not to do but sometimes we can trivialize it and be like oh the word of god must or make it grander than what it really is when oh it's something talking about the mouth is talking about something that that's bigger and, and something i don't understand i gotta study out more so i'm just gonna not do it right now because no 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 it's talking about your tongue it's talking about your lips it's talking about the words that you say to your mom your dad your, don't say stuff like that don't say negative things fear invoking and and doubt praising type things from your lips okay yeah i don't know how else to describe it but yeah it's very literal don't say anything like that and number five meditate upon the law meditate upon the word of god okay because integrity comes before leadership joseph came before moses okay integrity the type of person that you are the inside of you that stuff comes before leadership it comes before ministry so don't forsake the law you know what in fact meditate upon it 
after getting a further understanding of what meditation is, which is stopping, is being silent, is being open and communicative with the spirit of the Holy Ghost, not praying your will, not just be quiet, zip your lips, ding, ding, throw the key away like you guys just do in third grade. Okay, do that and wait upon the Lord. Feel after his spirit. God, where are you at? God, what are you doing? Where is your spirit at? But meditate upon the law. God, what does your word say? God, what, how do I apply this word into my life? How do I engraft it into who I am that I may live by it? Okay, because you're going to need that when you get into Canaan's land. Because Canaan's land, they're worshiping other gods. They're worshiping the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. They're worshiping wealth. They're worshiping money. They're worshiping this and they're worshiping that. Those of you entrepreneurs who God has given you a business model that he wants you guys to follow. In that Can in Canaan's land, when you go conquer that, the people that you'll rub shoulders with, those people, they worship cars. They worship names. They worship name brands. They worship $15,000 shoes. They worship $15,000 suits. They worship whoever has the most expensive, the greatest. They worship worship celebrities. They worship the lust of the flesh. They worship the lust of the flesh. They worship the lust of the flesh and they worship the lust of the flesh. Whatever their flesh wants to do, they have the money to go do it. So you got to meditate upon the law. God, what are you doing? God, what are you saying? I know I'm different than this world. I'm not of this world. I will not backslide, God. I need to meditate upon your law. Meditate upon the word. Mm, and just get it so down deep in my spirit that it's a part of who I am. Like Deuteronomy 6. Oh, yes. Get it all inside of you. Like the Shema. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not being like funny. I'm actually being quite serious. Meditate upon the law. And those are the five actions that we find that we must take and apply it to our lives, all coming out of the first chapter of Joshua. Now, Yabba fam, we talked about it. We exposed five of the absolute major hinges, the things that we have got to do in order to see the destiny of God come into our lives. It's not limited to Joshua. Okay, it's not limited to these five hinges either. God can give you seven things. God can give tack on four or five or six other things that you have to do in order to see your destiny come into fruition. He may, you know, hey, study an hour a day, you know, pray an hour a day in order to get your ministry. He may tack on those things, but these things, these five things aren't going to leave. Okay, you're going to have to move forward and be courageous. Obey the word of God, not veer from the word of God. You can't forsake the word of God from your mouth. You always got to be talking about it and speaking positive things, speaking the word of God. And you also have to meditate upon the law. So that's a part of who you are. Those five things are not going to go so we can apply it to our lives. And so now we've talked about it. Okay, now we've covered it. Now let's jump into the PIA to see how we're actually going to apply it. Now, honestly, Appa fam, it probably would have been easier if I would have thrown those five action steps into the PIA. But we're here now. We're jumping into the PIA, and we're going to talk about how we apply all this to our lives, okay? So now, honestly, Appa fam, it comes down to three questions. First question, what has God promised you? What promises has God given to you? What is he placed into your heart? What is he placed into your mind? What is he placed into your soul, into your spirit? What destiny is in your vision? What has he that you know he, God of the universe, gave to you to fulfill? What ministry? What calling? What company? What entity? What, 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 what did he give to you? What did he allow to come into your life for you to accomplish and for you to do? What is that thing? You got to find that thing. You got to know it. You got to have a very clear understanding about it. So much so that you can write it down. Like literally, not type it out, not anything like that. Go get a notepad, go get a piece of paper and write out what this thing is. What is the promise that God has given you? It could be in your journal. It can be in your prayer journal. It could be something that you keep personally to yourself and sharing it with no one except your spiritual authority. Okay, it can be something that you and God just pray over. You may not have it yet. If you don't have it, don't feel bad. Okay, I didn't get Yappa until I was like, what, 19, 18? And that's been my destiny for the past year. And it will be my destiny, I believe, at least for the next two, three years. So don't feel bad about it. Okay, you may have words from God. You may be cultivating your prayer life, maybe cultivating your spirituality. Okay, that was me since 14 to 18. And, and now I'm engaged with Yappa 238. And so that may be what the Holy Ghost is doing in your life right now. If that is the case, you want to stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost regarding that. You may not be ready to jump over Jordan and charge into Canaan's land. But if you are, being that the Holy Ghost has given it to you, then you got to be ready for the next few questions I'm going to ask. 
But again, walk with the Holy Ghost. It may not be your timing. If it's not your timing, don't feel bad about it. And if you don't know if it is your timing or not, go pray about it. Don't be lazy with your life, okay? Don't let things just pass you by. You only live once. YOLO is a very profound statement, okay? You only have one shot at making it to heaven. And the requirements for you making it to heaven is that you know your destiny for your life. Now, honestly, some people may want to argue that, but that's actually the truth. Okay, the only way for you to get to heaven is if you fulfill the will of God in your life. Okay, and the will of God is accompanied with the destiny he has for you. Okay, he wants you to be saved. He wants you to do something great for the kingdom of God. So do that. Fulfill that. What has God promised you? What has he given you? Do that to the utmost and to the fullest. Next question, Yapa fam. Once you know exactly what he's given you, what hinges do you have to identify in order to succeed? We covered five in the episode segment of the podcast, but what are some other hinges that you have to have in place that the word of the Lord came to you and you said, hey, if you do this, I will do that. Or I will do this if you do that. What is that hinge? What are those things? You got to know them. Because if you don't know them, if you don't know the hinges, then you ultimately can find yourself in a place where the will of God does not come into fruition in your life. And you're sitting there like, what in the world? uh, It should be coming to pass right now. That was the word of the Lord. But you didn't pay attention to the hinges and you didn't do what you're supposed to do as a human being to fulfill the will of God in your life. Okay. So next question or this question I'm asking you, what hinges do you have to identify in order to succeed? We covered five in the apostolic segment. You can rewind it. You can go back and listen to it. Those are the five. But what are some other ones that you that you absolutely have to identify in order to succeed? And lastly, Yappa fam, how are you going to apply the five hinges that we find in Joshua to conquer your Canaan? Okay, how are you going to apply those? And I'm a very straightforward, I'm pretty sure you guys found out from many PIAs and many comments and many DMs and many of the Apple Lives and all that other stuff that ultimately at the end of the day, it's just to just do it. You have to just do it. You have to go out there and just make it happen. Make it work. Obey the word of God, not disobey. Apply, not, not apply. You know what I'm saying? You got to just go out there and do it. Okay, because it's your destiny. You only live once. You're only going to, ideally, you only marry once. Okay, but you're definitely only going to live once. Okay, with these five hinges identified, as we found in Joshua 1, how are you going to apply it to your life? Okay, because that is critical. It is important. And it, and it is what is going to determine your destiny. Literally, it determined Joshua's and he was obedient with it. And what I can give you guys, which I just thought about, is Joshua 1 verse 10. This should be the answer for this question. The question is, how are you going to apply the five hinges that we find in Joshua 1 to conquer your Canaan? Well, let's go down just one more verse. Joshua 1 10. All it says is, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, verse 11, But let's just focus on those first three words. Then Joshua commanded. What did Joshua do after he got the word of God? He acted. He did something. He made something happen. He pushed. He pressed. He made something. He went beyond himself. He did something that made the word of God come into fruition in that moment. What did he do? He started working towards the word of God. He acted. He did something. And that is what we ought to do, Yappa fam. And that is what I believe every young apostolic has to get. Get to a place where when God speaks, you do. Especially when it comes to your destiny. So Yappa fam, that is the end of today's podcast. You know, I really hope That everything that we've covered in today's podcast was not only helpful, but that it will change some young person's life. Whether you're listening to it the Friday morning is released or you're listening to it, 
you know, two, three years from the date that it was released. Whenever you're listening to it, these are principles that are lifelong. They apply to every area of life, no matter what age you are. If you're looking to conquer something, especially when it comes to your destiny, this is like this is like heavy duty destiny stuff right here. You've got to have these five things in order, these five hinges in order, and you got to know the promise and the instructions, the hinge, the hinges for the, that promise. You got to know all that, and you got to be able to answer the three questions that we cover in the PIA: What promise has God given me? What hinges do I have to identify in order to succeed? And lastly, how am I going to apply the five hinges, the five action steps, I guess you would say, found in Joshua 1 to conquer my Canaan? Do those three things. Answer those three questions and apply what we've covered in today's podcast in your life. And I promise you, Yappa fam, that if you guys do this, if you guys take the time to invest in into your destiny, into your future, into your life, I promise you, God will reward you as he rewarded Joshua and the children of Israel for them stepping into their destiny. Yappa fam, I love you guys. You guys are phenomenal individuals. You guys are the people. I know for a fact, at least I really, really hope and trust and believe that will change the world for the gospel. And I'm excited to see all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it come into fruition and all your destiny be fulfilled according to the word of the Lord. Yappa fam, I love you guys. Be yappasolic above all, be apostolic. And I'll catch you guys in the next podcast.